Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR3U1 video and in this video we will be going over section uh, 6.3 on interpreting sinusoidal functions. You can find extra practice questions and I re uh, recommend that you do because uh, these questions do take a long time so we won't do as many examples in this video. So make sure you go over to the textbook and do questions on pages 370 to 373 and do the mid-chapter review on 374 to 376. Our success criteria for today says that we need to relate sinusoidal phenomena to their graph and look at real life scenarios that can be modeled using a sinusoidal graph. So both the sine and cosine functions can be used to solve problems involving repetition or repetitive motion and trends if a certain situations can be described uh, by one of these sinusoidal functions, then the graph of the functions should have uh, kind of symmetrical waves that repeat at regular intervals, like we have seen before. If we wanted to calculate for the speed of an object while in um, sinusoidal mo motion, we can actually div just divide the distance by the period, aka the time to complete one rotation, um, and this can be represented by speed equals distance over time by this equation right here. And these two pictures down here show two real life scenarios whose data, uh, whose data formed a sinus sinusoidal uh, wave. Uh, the first one shows uh, job applications per week uh, in hundreds for a certain company. It doesn't actually have a title, but it shows the job applications per week um, in uh, time and years which follows this sinusoidal pattern. Okay, next we have uh, this one, which, show, which shows the height of the paddle uh, that a person is holding, I guess, while canoeing um, or while kayaking, uh, the height of the paddle and of, uh, with respect to the water, I guess, um, in, uh, in, in uh, after in time and seconds, right? And it shows the height of the paddle uh, of two paddles held by paddle wheeler A and paddle, paddle wheeler B. Um, and it's clearly that paddle, uh, the wheeler B is lifting the paddle much higher than, than A because you can see it has a greater maximum value and they're both going, I guess, one meter under the water um, because at zero is the water level. Let's get right into an example. Here it says, Olivia was swinging back and forth in front of a motion detector when the detector was activated. Her distance from the detector in terms of time can be modeled by the graph shown, this graph right here. Calculate A for the equation of the axis, amplitude and period, and how close Olivia got to the motion detector. Then B, determine if it would be safe to run between Olivia and the motion detector at t equals seven seconds. Okay, so we have a girl named Olivia. I guess she's swinging on a swing and there's a motion detector right in front of her showing uh, how far she is from the motion detector at a certain time and as time goes on in seconds. So she starts eight, eight uh, it says meters from the motion detector and she goes swings towards the motion detector and then away from the motion detector and then towards the motion detector and then away from the motion detector and so on. And the motion detector, of course, is at zero, at uh, y equals zero. So A, we want to find the equation of the axis, the amplitude, the period, and how close Olivia got to the motion detector. Um, the equation of the axis, again, is um, y equals the max plus the min over two. Our max value will be 14 and our minimum value will be two. So we can plug those in, 14 plus two over two. So y is gonna be 16 divided by two, which is gonna give us eight. That's gonna be the equation of the axis. Right down the middle, y equals eight, which is exactly where she starts her journey towards the motion detector, right at y equals eight. Next, we want the amplitude. 
and the amplitude is the distance between the axis and the minimum or max maximum value. So from the maximum to the axis, we have one, two, three squares. So we have a distance of three, and as well as from the axis to the minimum value, we have a distance of three. So uh, um, amplitude is gonna equal three. And next we want the period. Period is gonna be the distance, sorry, the time passed as Olivia swings back and forth once. So let's say she starts right in the middle here. Actually, let's say she starts right at away from the motion detector. I'll draw it over here. She swings towards the motion detector and she goes right back to where she started, which is the farthest point from the motion detector. And this distance will be from 11 this should be 11, 2, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it should be 15. It takes her 15 minus 11 equals 4 seconds to do one swing. So one cycle of her motion will be 4 seconds. So that's her period, 4 seconds. Next and lastly, we want to find how close Olivia got to the motion detector, which will be our minimum value, which equals two, as we just found out before, because this is the value or the point in the graph that is closest to um, the x-axis, which is where the motion detector is. So the closest Olivia gets to the motion detector is two meters. Therefore. Olivia gets to two meters away from the motion detector. Okay. And now B, it says determine if it would be safe to run between Olivia and the motion detector at seven seconds. So for this question particularly we really just need to look at the graph and see how far Olivia is from the motion detector at seven seconds so we need to locate seven seconds on the graph which would be about right here and let's see how far Olivia is from the motion detector if we just follow this line up until we touch the graph we can see that she's actually at her maximum point on the graph or we are at the maximum point on the graph, meaning she is the farthest away she can be um, during her swing from the motion detector. So yes, it is safe um, to pass between Olivia and the motion detector at seven seconds. Okay, and here is the next example. It says Evan's teacher gave him a graph to help him understand the speed at which a tooth on a saw blade travels. The graph shows the height of one tooth on the circular blade relative to the cutting surface relative to time. Okay, so that's the graph given down here. Um, so there's a obviously a saw blade on a, um, I guess maybe a desk. Um, and we are cutting through a cutting surface and then back up and then down and back up. And we are um, doing a periodic um, motion of up and down and up and down. It says calculate A, how high above the cutting surface was the blade set? So where did it start? Um, and B, the period amplitude equation of the axis. And that's it for B. And C, how fast the tooth is traveling in inches per second. Okay. Obviously, I don't think it's traveling at a constant speed here, but we can calculate the speed, uh, the average speed. So for A, it says how high above the cutting surface was the blade set. So we have to see at the beginning of the graph how high above the cutting surface was it set. The cutting surface in this particular scenario is right at the x-axis. And since this is where the cutting surface is, we know that now um, the blade starts one inch above this cutting surface because we are at y equals one when we start off in the graph at time equals zero. So at time equals zero, 
the cutting blade uh, is set at a height of one inch. Okay, so that's where it's set to start. So B, let's move on now. Uh, let's move on to B. It says find the period, amplitude, and equation of axis as we've done before. So let's first do the period. Right, let's look for one cycle of our motion. One cycle of our motion will be from the start, I guess, back down and sorry, down and then back up. That's one motion, one cycle in our in our graph, and it spans from zero to zero point zero four. So our period will be zero point zero point zero four seconds. Okay. Then our amplitude. Let's uh, actually we'll do our amplitude, which is the distance between the max and the min. So we'll do max, which is one. Minus the min, which is negative seven. We'll divide that by two to get half the distance between them. So one minus minus seven is one plus seven, which is eight, divided by two, which is four. So therefore, A equals four. And then we want to calculate for the equation of axis, which is simply going to be uh, the max plus the min divided by two. So 1 minus 7 is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Therefore, the equation of axis is 1 equals, sorry, y equals negative 3. Okay, that's it for B and now for C. How fast the tooth is traveling in inches per seconds? We can calculate the average, uh, the average speed of the tooth by saying, okay, from the start to the minimum, let's say from the max to the minimum values, it travels from one inch to negative seven. That distance will be one minus negative seven, which is eight. Eight inches in how long? This many seconds, which is halfway between zero and 0 0.04. So the time is going to be. 0 0.04 minus 0 over 2, which is 0 0.02. So if we want to calculate for our speed, we just do speed equals distance over time. So 8 inches over 0 0.02 seconds will give us a speed of 400 inches per second. And that's our speed. Okay guys, and that is it for the video. I know we didn't do that many examples, but each one of these examples is quite lengthy. So I do suggest you go and try some of these questions yourself in the textbook. Um, and yeah, and I'll see you in the next, in the next video guys.